Welcome back to your biology lesson. Uh, this is for the benefit of half the class that are missing due to the coronavirus. So um, yesterday we looked at a hemoglobin and we looked at oxygen dissociation curves. So we're moving on to lesson three in the Cavoodle textbook on the mammalian heart. So today's lesson is just literally the anatomy of the heart, the structure of the heart, um, the names of the different parts and what their functions are. Now from the outside, what the heart looks like, this is a diagram from your textbook, you can see the heart is approximately the same size as your fist and it sits somewhere in the centre of your chest. Okay, There's a misconception, people put their hands on the left hand side of the chest saying right, my heart must be on the left hand side of the chest. When people are singing the national anthem, whatever, they put their hands there and singing their songs, they think the heart is on the left hand side of the chest. However, that is a misconception. Your heart is actually situated uh, towards the center of your chest, just behind your sternum. It's approximately the same size of your fist. And, uh, and the other thing is the heart isn't this shape. So, you know, Valentine's Day, people draw hearts like that. The heart isn't actually that shape. It's more of that kind of shape. But it still has that little pointy bit at the bottom. So why do people say that the heart is in the left-hand side? because the bottom bit here called the apex is slightly tilted to the left side. So more than half of your heart is actually sort of on the left side. So about 60% or so of the heart is on the left hand side of your chest. Although the line of symmetry, or it's not symmetrical, but the line, if you did it, goes along there. That's the center of your chest. You can see more of the heart is on the left compared to the right, but it is in the middle of your chest. So what can you see from the outside uh, of a heart? Your heart is approximately the same size as your fist, but what is the function? What is its primary function? What is the job of the heart? Anybody? To pump blood around the body. Right, pump blood around the body, that's it. Okay, to pump blood around the body so that blood can get to every single cell of, of your body so it can transport glucose and oxygen for aerobic respiration, all right? So from the outside, what can we notice? Well. This is a bit of a, a strange one. You've got blood vessels that are surrounding the outside of the heart. These blood vessels are called corid, uh, coronary arteries and veins. Coronary arteries and veins. And they supply the heart with its own supply of blood. Which sounds extremely strange because if you've got all this blood coming into your heart, every second your heart beats, Okay, how many times does your heart beat in a minute? Approximately for a healthy average adult? 30 times. 30 times will be a super fit person. 50, 50 times, you're still very, very fit. 15. Like a, 15. No, you're like a Shaolin monk, like a ninja. 70. 70-ish, right? So 70 is the approximate. So in your textbooks or anything you read, literature will say 72. 72 beats per minute, so it's one beat just slightly um, uh, less than a second. Okay, just under a second. Uh, will be a per heartbeat. Um, so that's an average healthy adult, as in if you get uh, unfit, the more unfit you are, this is sort of a, a basic way of measuring fitness is looking at your resting heart rate. So if it's slightly higher, your heart's having to work harder to get that blood around your body. So people, as you get fitter by doing more and more exercise, your heart's capacity, or what we, what we measure what we call cardiac output, the amount of blood it can pump out every minute actually increases because your heart gets stronger and it's the amount of volume you can hold gets bigger as well what we call stroke volume so the heart rate decreases so if you're a fit person uh fitter than the average person it will go lower so you know somebody who plays a lot of sport will be 60 beats per minute somebody who's an exceptional athlete will go down to about 50 beats per minute and then you get your super olympiads you know the guys that do the rowing in the olympics and things like that and the cyclists their resting heart rate will be down to about 40 40 beats per minute if you go then go into some kind of trance meditation, that's where you can slow it right down, okay? So from the outside though, so why would the heart, really weird, have these coronary arteries and veins supplying the heart with blood when the heart is the pump? That's what it is. It's what we call a double pump. There's two halves to it. It's, it's part of the circulatory system. It's pumping blood around your body. And there's loads of blood going inside. So why has it got another supply of blood on the outside when there's so much blood coming inside? 
What, do the, what does the heart do? It's constantly beating and contracting. Does it require lots of energy? It requires an immense amount of glucose and oxygen. Is the oxygen in the blood and the glucose in the blood going to diffuse across from the inside to all those cells? No, it's not, it's not possible. So the heart has its own supply of uh, blood to give it that oxygen and the glucose it requires. For that, because the heart is a very, it's the most active muscle in your body. It's always beating from before you were born, while you were still inside your mother's uterus, your heart starts to beat. And it's been beating ever since you, you know, the day you were born, even before that, and then until the day you die, your heart will stop beating. Every second it will beat once. So okay? is that why you have like the double circle? It's a double, double circulatory system, that's right. So when it goes to the heart and then the heart pumps it around to the rest of the body. That's right, it'll go to the lungs. And then we'll do that in our next lesson, we'll look at the circulatory system. In this particular lesson, we're just looking just purely on the structure of, of the heart. Okay? So, that's why. So, it's a little bit like this. So, I use the analogy, you know, I like food, obviously. I, I like food. Um, now, what does a chef do? So like, uh, like Master Chef, for instance, if you're gonna cook a meal for these uh, people that are gonna be testing your food and tasting your food, and you wanna impress them, you know, impress anybody with your food, while you're cooking, do you just keep adding a bit of salt, like dish it out? What do people do as they're cooking with the spoon? They, they, taste. they taste their food, don't they? Just, they get the first little sample, right? To make sure it's all okay. I use that kind of analogy. The blood is going to get pumped out this, uh, of the heart, this muscle, because that's what it is, made from cardiac muscle. It will go out through this major artery, the largest artery in your body called the aorta. And look, the cor coronary arteries are connected right at the beginning. So the first bit of blood that anything gets is the heart. The heart gets the first bit. It's like making dinner, but you have your first portion before anybody else does. But usually the chef always eats last, right? And it's kind of etiquette. Someone comes to your house, you make sure everyone else eats before obviously you eat. It's kind of it's a cultural thing, isn't it? You don't you make sure your people eat first. Um, but here, the heart eats first, right? The heart gets this bit of blood because there's a connection there from the aorta. And these little blood vessels that surround the heart are called the coronary arteries and veins. So the red ones here in red are, are the arteries, the blue ones are the veins. So that will return the blood. Um, back to the heart eventually. So, so from the outside, you can see the major artery here called the aorta, and the bit it sort of loops over your heart. That's called the aortic arch. All right, and you can see there's blood vessels, these arteries that come away from them. They're called brachial arteries. They go to your arms. Okay, supply your arms, and you've got the carotid arteries that go up your neck and into your head. So, so giving your brain lots and lots of blood so you get lots of glucose and oxygen your brain can only use glucose so it needs lots and lots of blood um, so blood goes away from the heart using arteries and blood returns to the heart using these blue ones here called uh, the veins okay so blood returns to the heart through the these the major vein that returns blood to the heart is called the vena cava I call it the vena cava, cava. now um, now, like I said, it's a double pump. So there's blood going to the lungs, to the heart side. So you've got the pulmonary arteries that supply blood to the lungs. And then the pulmonary veins bring the blood back from the lungs to the heart. Now, this is the only artery in your body that actually has deoxygenated blood. That's why it's colored in blue here. Now, remember we talked about yesterday, they're not actually that blue color. Okay, it's just a way so that you can tell, you can differentiate in the textbook the difference between the arteries and veins. It's just a purely graphical thing, okay? Not the actual colors. So the pulmonary artery is the only one in your body that actually has deoxygenated blood. And the uh, pulmonary veins, because they're bringing blood back from the lungs and they've been oxygenated, brings back oxygenated blood back to the heart. Uh, everywhere else in your body is the arteries that carry oxygenated blood and the veins that carry deoxygenated blood. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the outside. And here's a, some points. So what is the heart? The heart is the major organ of the circulatory system because there are other organs in your circulatory system. What are the other organs? They're your, what's connected to the heart? 
the blood vessels. So they're organs. What's the definition of an organ? Group of tissues. Group of tissues working together. So the heart is a group of tissues working together. There's nervous tissue, there's cardiac cells, cardiac tissue, there's fat around your heart to insulate the heart, I guess a fat adipose tissue. Uh, arteries and veins are the same as well, which we'll come on to in a few lessons time. We'll look at the different layers and the different cells and tissues inside the arteries and veins. Um, so, yeah, so we've got the arteries and veins, but the heart is the major. Like we said, it's about the fist size, approximately the size of your fist, and it's made up of four chambers, which we'll look at in a second, and approximately five decimeter cubes, so about five liters of blood goes through your heart every minute, all right? And that is approximately the amount of blood in your body. So every minute, your heart has pumped that blood around and around and around, all right? So it's about between five and six liters of blood in the average adult. So it's these very special cells it's got. It's got these cardiac muscles where they, they, can, they contract when they get stimulated, they twitch. And there's two pumps in there. One goes to the lungs and one pumps to the rest of the body. Okay? Now there's two, you've got the, the major artery, as I said, is the aorta. That's the aortic arch. But the, the, the vena cava, there's two of them that come back to, what, which I'll show you in a minute, the right atrium these two okay vena cava one comes from below one comes from above so the word inferior what does the word inferior mean to you you're thinking weaker yeah can mean that under, under can mean under somebody yeah under somebody who's inferior to you that's somebody below you right under you and somebody is your superior, like your boss, they're your superiors, they're above you. So this is why you get this, you get superior vena cava, because that's coming, draining blood from the top of the body, back to the heart, and the inferior vena cava is bringing blood from lower down legs and places back to the heart. Okay, so that's the inferior vena cava. Um, now, we're gonna look at what the heart looks like from its side. So this is the worksheet that you've just been given. Okay, and if you're away today, you'll have to make sure that you click one of these. I'll post one on Show My Homework. And uh, if you don't get one, I've got some printed today. So to make sure you collect one, and we're gonna annotate this diagram. Okay, so what do we know already? So if I take a cross section of the heart, well, from the outside, you should be able to recognize that these ones are our vena cava. So that one must be your superior vena cava, and that's your inferior vena cava. Now, if you go on to do medical sciences at university and you look at anatomy, you also get other things like you might hear anterior. So if you get anterior, that means it goes closer to the front of your body. And if you get something that says posterior, it means it's closer to the back. It gives you the location of the organs and things in your body. So if this is closer to the front, this will be uh, anterior, superior, vena cava. And if this is further behind, that will be posterior, inferior, vena cava, because it's closer to your back. That's how we label things, okay? Um, so you can obviously know you've got your aorta here, and this is the aortic arch. These are arteries that supply your arms. Now you don't need to know this in this much detail. The ones that go to your arms are called your brachial arteries. The one that goes to your brain is called your carotid, which is C-O-A-R-O-T-I-D, carotid arteries that go up to your brain. So blood will return via your vena cava and go into this chamber here. That chamber, is called the right atrium. Now a lot of you guys have done this back in your GCSE, so a lot of this is revision from your GCSEs. In the old GCSEs, when it used to be A star to E, F, G, whatever, they didn't have this module in, in the biology units. Now that you're doing your nine to ones, this is part of your thing, so this, a lot of this should be revision. Okay, so um, this is your right atrium. Now atrium just means entrance in Latin, so it's the entrance to the, to the heart. Okay, so the, the heart's got four chambers, two chambers at the top and two chambers below. And it's separated by a sheet of muscle in the middle. 
called a septum. Okay? We call it the atrioventricular septum. A septum just means something that separates two sides, two chambers. So you've got a septum right there. It separates your two nasal passages. Okay, that's your septum on your nose, your nasal septum. Here is a septum that's separating the right-hand side of your heart to the left-hand side of your heart. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Everything is inverted, so it's like a mirror image. So if you imagine when you draw anything biological, it's on the actual page. So this is the right-hand side of the heart, and this is the left-hand side of the heart. Okay? So anything on that. So this must be the right atrium, and this one, therefore, must be the left atrium. The bottom two chambers are called ventricles. So this side is known as the right ventricle, and this side is known as the left ventricle. So blood will enter your heart through your right atrium, and the heart is double pump, so it will, it will contract on both sides at the same time, forcing the blood down into the ventricles. And what will happen then is the heart will relax at the top. I will go through the cardiac cycle in more detail because that's part of another lesson. But what will happen is the blood goes down, it will try to go back up as the ventricles try to contract. But the blood doesn't want to go back the way it came. So to prevent that from happening, what do we have? It begins with a V. Valves. You've got these valves, okay? You've got valves. These are called atrioventricular valves. Atrioventricular valves. So this one will be your right atrioventricular valve, and this one will be your left atrioventricular valve. You can also call them, from the old Latin names, tricuspid and bicuspid. So the way I get people to remember them, tricuspid valve, and this one's the bicuspid valve. But you, you can call them the right atrioventricular, atrioventricular valve, and the left atrioventricular valve. That's why it's labeled in your textbook. But if you can't remember that, but you can remember this, cuspid, it just means like the little cups. This side's got three little cups. Okay? Tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve. How do I get people to remember which side's which? I say, try before you buy. My audience is dead. What's going on? Right, come on. <laughs> try before you buy. buy. You heard of that in the shops? Yes. Yeah? So if you go to the shops, you do that taster, you try it out before, and you think, oh, this tastes nice, and then go and buy it. So try before you buy. Tricuspid, bicuspid valve, or the right atrioventricular valve and the left atrioventricular valve. So when the blood tries to go back, it, um, it, it, the valves snap back shut, and that's the sound effect you get. So when you get a stethoscope on, or you're listening to your heart, and you get the lub-dub sound, the da-dum, 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 in your textbook say lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. That is the sound of these valves snapping back shut. So when the blood tries to go backwards, this valve shuts first, these atrioventricular valves, and as the blood gets forced out of the ventricles, some of the blood will go through the, this one here, which is the pulmonary artery, that will go to your lungs, and from this side, so the right-hand side of the heart will take blood to the pulmonary artery and to your lungs, but the left-hand side of your heart, at the same time, will go through your aorta, okay, and that will take the blood to the rest of the body. As the blood tries to fall back into the heart, because the pressure becomes very low, because the heart will relax, and the blood will try to fall back into the heart, to stop the blood going back into the heart, you've got what we call semilunar valves. Semilunar. What does semi mean? Half. Half. What is the word, where does the word lunar come from? Yeah. The moon. Yeah, not lunar from the other class, right? Lunar with the R at the end. That lunar is the moon, so it's like a half moon, okay? So these half moon, they prevent the blood from going back, and that's the dub sound. So when these shot, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, 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 dub. It's these valves that are closing. Okay, that sound effects, right. Um, so we've got our right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. We've got our 
atrioventricular septum, well done. This little bit, the corner of the heart, is called the apex. Any corner, like the roof, the corner of a roof, is called an apex. So that's the apex of the heart. And these are the, the walls of the ventricles. Now, what do you notice about the thickness of the walls of the ventricles and the atria? Are the atrial walls very thick? They're very thin, aren't they? Right, very, very thin. Do they need to push blood very far? The blood's only going from there to there. So the blood's not going very far, so they don't need to push with much pressure. When they come down here, where will the blood go? Up, right? Now, this side is pumping blood to the lungs. Are the lungs very far away from your heart? No. They're next door neighbours, okay? Because they're next door neighbours, the wall's very thin. So that's only gonna, it doesn't need to pump with a lot of pressure to get the blood to the lungs. But when it comes to this side, the left ventricle, look at the thickness of the walls there. Can you see the difference? Is there much difference? When you do your dissections, when you do the required practical, you'll see the graphics here doesn't show very well, but this is a lot thicker, much thicker, than this side, which is a lot thinner. Why, why does this side have to be much thicker? Because it pumps into the whole body. Pumps into the whole body. So it's a very uh, standard exam question. Why is the, the you know, walls of the right ventricle, so the left ventricle, thicker than the left? You need to talk about the, the contractions will produce more force because it needs to produce more pressure to get the blood to the rest of the body, to the whole body. So it has to go much further. It has to go all the way to your little fingers, to the tips, it needs to get all the way to your brain, it needs to get all the way down to your little toe. So it's got very far to go. Okay? Um, so the other thing you can notice is these valves, these valves have these little heart strings. Okay? So uh, you hear that phrase tugging on your heart strings, right? That, those are heart strings. They're what we call tendinous cords, and they're very tough. When you tug on them, when you, when you do your dissection, you'll see they're very, very tough tendons. They don't break easily. You'd have to use scissors to cut them, to snap them, or else scalpel. Why? Because there's a vast amount of pressure down there trying to, you know, make these valves go backwards, and that's to stop them from inverting, from going back the other way. The other thing you'll notice is it's very smooth on the inside. Any ideas why it's very smooth on the inside? Blood can flow, that's right. So you get very, you know, less resistance and the blood can flow uh, and, and pass through. Let's see if we've missed anything. So, we've mentioned the aorta, and we've mentioned the superior anterior vena cava. So it's at the top and the front. We mentioned the pulmonary artery. Arteries, you've got one to the right and the left, because remember, you've got a left lung and a right lung, so it sort of branches away from each other, so it goes either direction. You've got pulmonary veins, and if you notice, it comes back this side, and it also comes back this side, because it's bringing it back from the left lung and the right lung. And we've got our semilunar valves, we've got our left atrioventricular valve and our right atrioventricular valve, but also known as the tricuspid and your bicuspid tri before you buy. We got our septum here, atrioventricular septum or ventricular septum here. Cavity just means the hole. So it's the, the hole inside because it's the four chambers. We got inferior posterior vena cava and we got a thicker muscular wall of the left ventricle. And the one thing that hasn't been mentioned here, this corner bit is known as the apex, the apex of the heart. Now, what I'll do is we will go through the cardiac cycle, but I'll do that as another different video because obviously this is lots of information. With this particular lesson, all you need to know is you need to be able to label the structures of the heart, the features of the heart, and give some and, and understand and explain what those features are for, what they actually do. There'll be another lesson on the cardiac cycle, which is basically talking about how the heart contracts in rhythm and how it pumps blood around the body, all right? And then there'll be another lesson about the circulatory system, the circulatory system as a whole, and that's gonna probably be next time. We've also got a lesson on the structure of the arteries, veins, and capillaries. That's the direction of travel, that's what we're going. So Friday's lesson, we will probably have a tutorial to give us time to catch up on things, if we're open, obviously. 
um, as the classes are due to be diminishing, I'll probably slow down the things. But if schools do close down over the next few weeks or so, I'll be doing these lessons. I'll work my way through the book and also do revision lessons and post them on the My Smart Learning uh, YouTube channel. So if it's been useful for you and you've learned lots and, and it's been useful, press the like button obviously and subscribe to this channel. That's what they all keep saying, right? But yep, see you on the next video.